welcome back to another episode of Growing with La La's Crop. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button and also that bell notification so that you can get notified once I post a new video. Also, you guys, don't forget to follow my Instagram account at La La's Crop where I like to post daily garden inspiration, you guys. So I'm really excited because I'm able to share with you guys what I have growing. I have placed maybe about 75% of my plants out in the garden and the seeds that I have also sold have started to germinate so I'm able to show you what's going on in the garden and what's what my plans are for spring 2021 let's start with the first row I have a peanut plant going right here that I started indoors let's see I started indoors on February 18th and then I transplanted the plant outdoors on 3 6 the peanut plant is it has adjusted very well you guys it has developed a lot of new growth and then right next to that we planted some sweet potato slips and we also have a video showing you how we planted these sweet potato slips so if you are interested in watching that video and seeing what nutrients we added to feed the plants and what soil amendment we used i will provide a link for that video so just check for that link in the upper right hand corner of this video and then right behind that i'm growing some rosemary as an herb to use for cooking but also to help repel off some of those harmful pests so i have a total of two plants well actually i have a total of four plants in this area i have a total of two so behind the rosemary i decided to grow some onion bulbs and i started these from bulbs you guys i did not grow these from seeds so these plants are doing very well as you can tell, like look at this one. And then look at the base of the plant. It's starting to get a little thicker. So I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 plants. Well, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I have some in the back too, behind uh, what I'm about to show you now, which is the Asperbrock. Let me show you the tag over here, which is the Asperbrock that I started 210. So for those who may not know what Asperbrock is, it's like it's in the brassica family the stem has like asparagus taste and then the the top half it has the taste of like a broccoli this plant is doing very well it does have a little minor uh pest damage but you know um i will make a video to show you guys signs that you can look out for and where you can find these harmful pests that like to eat your leaves you guys all right so moving on so i have a total of four asperbrock plants so here's one right here, another one right here, another one right here. And then right in between, like in the middle, I decided to grow some dill near my brassica plants because the dill is supposed to help repel aphids, squash bugs, spider mites, the cabbage loper, and the small white fly. So and for any gardeners who grow brassicas, you guys know that the cabbage loper loves to attack your brassicas and make those small and big holes in your leaves so i'm trying to do a lot of companion planting this year so of course i have like my onions which are said to help repel off certain pests and then my dill and then for the rosemary herb it said that a rosemary helps repel from mosquitoes and cabbage moths so you know the cabbage moths are the ones that lay the eggs and the cabbage worms are the ones that you know make the holes um, in your leaves so this is the second row and then I decided to grow like a white marigold right here so it's it's doing something <laughs> and then in the third row of course you guys know if you can tell I'm growing some collard greens this plant is doing very very well now I do have minor damage of the cabbage loafer you see these little small holes you know it happens even with the other collard greens that I grew you guys where I made a video and that's when I first started out you guys I decided to make a video just you know sharing um, my three feet tall collard greens I grew three feet tall collard greens and they were beautiful once they grew up to a certain height I did not experience any pest damage those plants did not give me too much of a fuss now when they were younger I did experience you know minor pest damage of course from the cabbage loafer but as they got older they were some beautiful plants so if you guys are interested in that video also, I will provide a link for that video in the upper right hand corner. For any video links that I mentioned that I have made previously, the notification for those video links will appear in the top upper right corner of this video, you guys. I have a total of four collard green plants growing. And like I said, some of the leaves have minor damage of pests. I'm gonna show you. Like look at this leaf, for example, like that's pest damage, you guys. 
So, I do still have to make a video, show you guys how I harvest my collard greens. I also made a video last year, show you guys how I harvested from my three feet tall collard greens. And I will provide a link for that video if you're interested in seeing how I harvested those lovely leaves like those are beautiful you guys so definitely check that video out but yeah you guys my collard greens are doing pretty good um to be honest i started late with growing my collard greens that's why they are not as tall or full as the collard greens i grew last year because i last year i started my collard greens earlier than what i did this year so but you know they they doing their thing still one of my goals is to try to grow three feet tall collard greens again this year you guys so but if I don't, I'm not going to beat myself up about it. <laughs> In these two square foot, I am growing baby carrots over here. And right here, I have the Denver variety growing. So it's a little shady right now because I still have to go in and harvest these collard green leaves. And then in these two square foot, I am growing um, garlic, you guys. Over here, I'm growing some cucumbers. So I decided to kind of like squeeze these in here because I was already growing this amaranth plant and this variety is the coral variety. So I was like, uh, I really don't want to miss out on, you know, using every inch of this square foot. So I just decided to grow these cucumbers. I have two plants right here. I may just take one out depending on how it grows. Um, but this is the Diva cucumber variety right here that I'm growing. If you guys are looking at this lovely garden ladder that I will be growing this, the cucumbers on, I recently made a video showing you guys how I made this garden ladder. It was super easy, you guys. The materials I use for this, you can purchase from Home Depot. These ladders are great for the garden because of the material. It's safe for placing down into your soil as opposed to the regular step ladders, which are made out of wood, which could possibly start to rotten. Um, down in your soil. So if you're interested in seeing how I made this garden ladder, of course you guys, I will provide a link for that video. That link will be provided in the upper right hand corner of this video. I currently have two of these garden ladders. And then in the front right here, I have some nasturtium flowers growing. And nasturtium flowers are great as a trap crop, you guys, to help trap aphids. So I'm using this as another companion plant to help repel off or help attract some of those harmful pests. And then along the edge right here, I have a morning glory flower that I plan on growing up on the trellis. And then I'm still planting out, I'm still planting out these areas, but I probably will grow beans, you guys. And then right here, I have the red amaranth underneath my um, collard greens. I have some uh, marigolds. And marigolds are great with, with repelling certain pests and then right here i'm growing another nasturtium uh, plant a flower but this is the tall variety so this variety will start to grow up on the arch also all right so that's basically what i have in this raised bed right here all right you guys to so move on to my flower raised bed slash watermelon <laughs> in the front right here i have these lovely snapdragons growing so i have three pink varieties and then i have these lovely red varieties like look at how red and vibrant this color is it has like a little orange in there too a, a hint of orange so i have three of those plants in the front and then like in between i have cosmos uh, flowers and then in the second row knowing too too well you guys but in the second row i'm growing the xenia flowers and they have like backsplash from the rain that we recently had you guys so um i need to go in here and kind of attend to that but um these are just the cut flowers. Behind that, I have the cactus xenia variety. And I'm glad I planted another seed because that one died over there. Okay, moving on to the side. Okay, so for the side, I have some more cucumbers right here growing. And like I said, I may have to just take one out depending on how huge these grow. I don't know because it's my first year growing these. And then right here on the border around the like this is the dwarf zinnia and then i have another um nasturtium plant right here and then this plant is an african daisy in this row i'm growing along the trellis that i that we did a couple weeks ago i also have a video for that you guys i have a video for a couple things so i decided to grow watermelons like melons on the trellis for spring 2021 so this variety that i'm growing right here is the mini love so I, have, I currently have two plants. 
but I did decide to start some new plants indoors because yeah I just want more you guys I want to make sure that we really get us some good tasting refreshing mouth watering watermelons this year <laughs> on the other side down there i have sugar baby watermelon i do have to make a video for you guys giving you guys an update on how the watermelon seedlings adjusted once i planted them especially since last night we had a little cool weather so i will be making a video on that and so in front of uh these watermelon plants i decided to grow some uh a different variety of marigold which is the tall variety. So I have that along, all along in front of the watermelon seedlings to help repel off some, some bad pests, such as aphids and stuff like that. And you guys see these mushrooms that have popped up in the soil. These are all great signs of a lot of organic matter within the soil. So that's a good sign, just in case you were wondering what these were. <laughs> all right so moving on to the other side which is a four by four that we added on to this race bed i am growing <laughs> corn and sunflowers you guys i'm really excited because thus far the corn plants are doing very well uh, the variety that i'm growing is the peaches and cream peaches and cream you know what i don't know the rest of the lyrics but yeah so in this row i'm growing sunflowers these are growing nicely thus far come in here kind of add a little bit more soil for support um, but I'm growing the snack variety so I have a total of three plants and uh, the snack variety is just uh, a sunflower that provides sunflower seeds for snacking and then in the corners I'm growing more nasturtium flowers now um, what variety I'm growing I what variety of nasturtium I'm growing I forgot um, and then in this square foot right here, I'm growing okra and the variety is the heavy hitter, which produces up to like 200 okra pods, you guys. So I really wanted to try this variety out so that I would not have to grow as many plants. Just have some marigolds, some more marigolds right here. This is a tall variety that I have growing along the side of the corn and well, in between the corn and the sunflowers. Um, now the, these won't get as tall as the sunflowers will, but I still wanted to provide some type of, you know, companion planting um, to help repel off certain, some of those harmful pests. Um, so yeah, I have the peaches and cream growing right here. Um, I have a total of two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 10, 12. I have a total of 16 corn plants. And then in between, like in the middle, I decided to grow some bush beans. So that's why you see like these like little indentions uh, in between the corns. And then over here, I have another variety of sunflowers that I'm growing which is the sun dancer and that will be used as a cut flower I forgot to show you guys in the back where I have the watermelons I'm also growing more nasturtium plants but those are the tall varieties that will grow up on the trellis so in this raised bed I have my tomato cages already up and running <laughs> so that means that I will be growing my tomatoes in this area um, but I will be growing my indeterminate variety. I uh, planted my first tomato that I grew indoors. I planted this a couple weeks ago, you guys. So it has already developed new growth, like it has adjusted very well. For the other spaces, I still have to, I still have my plants indoors. So I will have to do another garden update once those get, get out here. But along the border here, I'm growing the same varieties on each side, you guys. So up, up here it's morning glory and then right next to it is another nasturtium flower. And then right here is another nasturtium plant, the tall variety. So I'm like I said, I'm trying to implement a lot of nasturtiums this year, you guys. I actually caught an earworm eating my leaf on this plant and I posted that on Instagram. You guys have to check it out. I added a really funny audio to the video as he was eating my leaf, you guys. Like y'all have to y'all have to check it out. So make sure you check out follow my Instagram account which is Lala's Crops. But yeah you guys that 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 earworm was tearing up this leaf. And I was a I had to record it because of how fast he was eating the leaf. So yeah you guys gotta go check it out. Like I said you guys I have about 75% of my plants in the garden so i still have to add more to this raised bed and this raised bed is basically for medical purposes so i'm growing 
herbs in the front i have so in this first square foot i have chamomile growing it's doing pretty well no not flowering just yet but um it is said that you can use chamomile flowers as an herbal tea you guys so my echinacea flowers again this year and you can also use those flowers for medical uh, purposes for to help boost your immune system now by how much i don't know but I still like to grow them in my garden um, because I grew up on taking echinacea pills from my grandmother. Then right here, I have lemon balm, you guys. Around the border of this raised bed, I'm growing strawberries. And then I think, I think these are the Ozark varieties. And then in the third row back here, I have borage and these two. Now I still have to plan uh, for something right here. I may add, um, I don't know yet, I don't know. <laughs> But along the back, you guys, these are my sweet pea flowers that I'm growing. So I'm really excited to try these out this year because it's my first time growing these. And um, a lot of people rave about the aroma that they give off. So I'm really excited about that. And these are uh, these can be used for as cut flowers also, you guys. Oh, and I forgot to show you. Here I'm growing bee balm, you guys. Some Two more raised beds and then we'll be done. In the first row, and this is my oldest raised bed that I put together all by myself. I mean, all you have to do is slide the pieces in, but that's side the point. I did all by myself. I have more onion bulbs growing right here. These two square foots. This is my first year growing onion bulbs, so I tried to make sure that I gave them a great foundation of nutrients, and you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna have to keep on feeding them. And then right next to the onion bulbs i'm growing scallions you guys hopefully you can see that scallions so i'm really excited uh, about growing especially the scallions because i grew these from seeds indoors um, last year i bought the little small scallion um, bulbs from home depot like i said my first year i grew a lot of seedlings that i purchased from home depot or lowe's so this year like I said, I challenged myself to grow majority of my flowers and vegetables from seeds, you guys. So I'm really excited to see the amount of growth that these scallions are producing thus far. And yeah, so I have more growing indoors that I will have to plant in this square foot right here. But yeah, you guys, these scallions are doing good. They're doing great, you guys. In this area, I decided to place some thyme which is supposed to help repel off some of those harmful pests that like to attack uh, cabbage plants, which I will be growing in the second row. So I will have my onions in the first row, and then the second row I'll have my cabbage plants. And then um, the other rows, I, or in the back, I will be placing um, my determinate tomatoes in two of the square foot, and then the other two I will be placing um my cucumber plants you guys so this red bed is basically planned out of just i'm waiting to transplant um the seedlings you guys and then of course as you can see these colorful flowers are of course marigolds you guys and then lastly i'm showing you guys the strawberry patch so i recently harvested like four strawberries you guys i will provide a footage of that and i was really excited like the smaller strawberries were really sweet you guys like that just amped me up like i was like okay all right i gotta get out here in the garden and kind of attend to the strawberry patch as far as providing a thicker layer of the the mulch and then also uh coming in here and giving the plants some nutrients since spring is basically here you guys so but yeah i have already amended the soil um so now i need to go in here and provide some nutrients for these plants but as you can see, we have some more strawberries developing. Right here. Got some right there. Um, some right here in the back. All right, you guys. So that basically concludes today's video. Giving you my garden tour for spring 2021, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video as much as I did. We're showing you guys what i have planted and sold thus far you know everything is still growing some things are not up just yet or you know hasn't blossomed just yet so give me a couple more months and i'll give you guys another garden tour 
you know, once everything is kind of basically up and growing, <laughs> I will be also, you know, making more videos about how I keep my garden up, you know, maintenance, feeding, any progress that we uh, get as far as, you know, harvesting. That's always fun. So make sure that you guys are subscribed to my channel and also hit that bell notification so that you can get notified once I post those videos you guys my next video will be for harvesting these collard greens harvesting these collard greens so yeah in that video i will harvest the collard greens and i will show you what i feed my collard greens you guys because i have been getting a lot of questions about my video that i did last year showing everyone how i grew three feet tall collard greens and um another video showing how i harvested my um collard greens i've been getting a lot of questions about how did you grow these collard greens what did you feed them how did you get the stem so tall and thick now how i got the stem so tall and thick i mean i could just give you guys suggested ideas so i'm going to make a video another video because i do have a video but i don't think it's probably very detailed um and maybe some people don't know about it but i will provide a link for that video also you guys know where to check that video out but yeah i will be making an updated video in more detail on how i grew my collard greens so that you know so that we used to spread the love around and other people can also get some nice size beautiful collard greens you guys i will see you guys in my next video harvesting my collard greens right there and also feeding them as always you guys happy gardening peace